Well, have you ever been in a relationship, gone outside, done literally anything ever as a human being? Well, if you have, you've probably noticed that men and women are very different from one another in some key ways. They look different. They've got different personalities, different instincts. Some have different interests and so forth and so on. A provocative new book argues that the West has lost its mind and is trying to rebuild society on the belief that men and women are identical. The two genders are just an arbitrary label with no real meaning at all. Ashley McGuire is the author of that book. It's called Sex Scandal, The Drive to Abolish Male and Female, and she joins us now. Ashley, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks for having me. This is one of the most profound changes, I think, in the history of the West, the redefinition of sex from a biological reality to a social construct, and it's had a lot of implications. What are some of them? Well, I think a lot of people like you are sort of wondering how it is that they woke up and, for example, we're talking about requiring women to register for the draft yes. or seeing toys banned from their classroom for gender equity reasons um, or wondering why it is that we're sending mothers of young children into combat and calling it equality. And That's I right. think a lot of us can see that, if anything, um, the ramifications are very unequal, especially for women. What do, you, what do you mean by, I mean, I guess there's the, the obvious point that all things that make women unique and distinct are now verboten, so it does kind of degrade the idea of being a woman, in my opinion, though I'm not one. Um, but what do you mean the distribution is unequal, the effect is unequal? Well, I think we have this idea that if we treat men and women identically, if we can just get rid of the differences, yes. they view the difference as the source of the inequity, then we will have achieved equality. But what you end up seeing is the burden of, of that approach fall on women. I think I talk a lot in my book about college campuses and the sexual assault crisis. Yeah. And I think that's a result of trying to say, oh, sure, we can put men and women um, in the same dorms, on the same floors, in the same bathrooms, and in some cases in the same rooms. Co ed dorm rooms are now a thing. Yes. And then wonder why it is we have a sexual assault epidemic on college campuses. Philosophically, it's interesting that the transgender bathroom debate. I think most people think, well, I don't really, you know, I don't want to bother people who want to use a different bathroom. Whatever. Most people are pretty tolerant, I would say. But underneath it all is the assumption, the demand that all of us recognize that men and women are exactly the same. And it seems to me it's kind of an attack on women. I mean, if I can be a woman simply by saying I am, then what's special about women? Well, and even more so, I mean, how can women make claims on the basis of their sex if we're now going to say that sex is not a valid category, that this is an arbitrary label assigned at birth, um, how are women, and this is, this is interesting because this is where you're seeing social conservatives and radical left-wing right. feminists actually line up together because they're saying that women are threatened in a world where women can't make claims on the basis of being a woman because male and female are invalid. Well, just to, just to get back to the, the, the root of this, I often hear people on the left say, you know, I believe in science. I listen mm -hmm. to NPR, yeah. I believe in science. I drive a Subaru. <laughs> is the idea that sex is purely a social construct and not a biological reality, is that rooted in science? No, this is what was really stunning to me was to see how, you know, we have science thrown in our faces all day long. And, you know, your your sex is literally established from the moment of conception. That is a very basic biological medical reality and if you read say medical textbooks they're going to talk about your sex in very plain scientific terms and so society is going in a completely different direction huh so there aren't a lot of scientists who say you know sex is not your gender is not real it's just you can assign it to yourself and it's totally no valid. and in fact you know i have two little kids and even my pediatrician the other day was sort of like this is a I don't really know how to handle this they're they're making our jobs impossible to do because we're looking at the facts and the facts you know biology is is very sort of self-evident um, but that's become politically incorrect yeah we're the rest of us are required to lie at gunpoint basically so what's the, the, the promise of all of this all these changes is it'll make people freer and happier that you know this is what liberation looks like and you can have an abortion and you can you know all the things that feminism promises, but the, the outcome is supposed to be positive. Have women gotten happier? No. In fact, as I document in my book, what we've seen is that women right now are at the unhappiest, they're the unhappiest they've ever been. They're the most anxious, most depressed. There's something like two or three more times likely than men to use um, medications for anxiety or depression. And I think that's very much related to the fact that we're struggling to basically be ourselves in a world that's making us um, trying to make us be more like men. Wait, so we're certain that women are less happy than they've been in recent 
memory? Oh, sure. There was a big study that came out a couple of years ago. I believe it was with the University of Pennsylvania that found that this was a, a recorded, they had never seen levels of unhappiness at these recorded levels before. Um, well, it kind of says it all right there, doesn't it? I, I think so. Well, I hope people read your book. It's really interesting. Ashley McGuire, thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you.